Welcome everyone to Sunday School for this week. So excited to see you all again back with us. So last week we talked about justice, right? And what it means uh, to act justly and what justice means in a Christian sense. And this week we're going to be talking about what is it, what does walking the talk look like? What does it mean to, to not just say, right, that God loves you, but to, to show it, right, to, to act on our Christian belief. So, Father, I was wondering, so we talked about justice last week. Is there a piece of scripture that would build a bridge from the idea of justice to this idea of action and acting on what we believe? You know, there, there is. I mean, first off, there's so much in scripture that talks about how we take the things that we believe and proclaim and, and put them into practice. Uh, one of the ones that I really love is one that has been used by many people for many years. Uh, and it was a favorite of a mentor of mine when I first became a priest. It's from the book of the prophet Micah in the Hebrew scriptures. And it goes something like this. God has told you, mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require, but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. So to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. So that's taking the things we proclaim and, and trying to turn them into practice. So I'm wondering, you know, how, how do we find out ways to do that? Can you think of some, some ways for yourself that you find those, 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 those hooks, those, those bits and, and way to make good choices? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing to read about that, um, but I think it's also helpful to see it too, to see it in front of you. And that's often how I make the choices is I, I look around me and I see who are, where are there people who, who are acting with, who are doing justice and who are acting with mercy. And I look for those people and sometimes they may be people close to me, maybe they're people in church, uh, sometimes maybe it's just a stranger who I see, you know, doing a, something kind for somebody else. And what I do is I store those in my head and I say, that's how I need to act, right? That's something that is walking the talk. That's something that acting as a Christian was. And sometimes those people might not even be Christian, but they are still acting out that that idea that a Christian, as a Christian would, of, of loving others and of showing mercy to others. Um, and, and that's often what I look for. So that helped me a lot, Father Marshall. Are there, t are there people that teach you what not to do, I wonder? Oh, yes, that's definitely true, too. I think we can see those, those often in our lives. And hopefully you don't see those pieces too much. But when you do, right, when you see people who are acting right um, more selfishly or, or, or not helping others, you st store those as well, right? And again, that's an example of seeing it, right? Seeing it in front of you and seeing an example of something that not to do, something that you, you do not want to act like that. And that might help you for when, you know, you're in a similar situation, right? You'll say to yourself, oh, I need, I need to act the other way. I'm not going to turn my back on this person. I am going to help them out, you know? I'm not going to, you know, act with angry words towards a person. I, I am going to try to listen to them instead. Um, so that, that that is definitely helpful too to see people who don't don't act as as a Christian one. I uh, I, I remember as you know as, as I was asking that question about what not to do is when I was learning how to be a priest years and years and years and years and years ago. Um, I took a lot of classes for that. So I took classes in church history and, and in theology and in, in, in practical church and society. I mean, ethics, you name it, there's a class for it. And one of the things that I found fascinating about the school that I went to is there, there, what there wasn't a class for was how to celebrate the Eucharist, something I do every week with my community or sometimes even daily, where I, I, I break bread and lift the cup and share communion with people. There's no guidebook that tells you exactly how to do it. And we did a, a little practice run with my uh, my professor back in the day, and I asked him. I said, "How do you know, how do you know how to do this?" And he says, "What you do is that you watch 
and you say, as you watch somebody celebrating the Eucharist and moving their hands this way and that and doing this and that, you say, I'll do it that way. And you take that on. But you also learn just as much from the person that you look at and you say, I'll never do it that way. That both of those moments are very holy because they teach you the, and, and you have to learn how to trust the instinct to say, this is where I feel God is taking me to do and act. And this is the way I don't feel that. And, and learning how to discern what gets you into that space is really, um, it takes you to a point where everything you do has an intention. It has, you know, if I move my hands this way or this way, it's because I have, an, I have chosen to do that consciously and mindfully. And in the same way, when you deal with people, you know, when, when you choose to act with someone in a certain way, you're doing that having considered it and been mindful about it and saying, when I'm in this situation, I will do this. And when I'm in that situation, I'll do that. Um, or when I'm in this situation, I won't do it this way. I'll do it, you know, or I won't do that. And I think that's important because I think all of us, what, whatever age we are, we learn by, we learn by imitating, by, by watching someone and, and, and doing the thing they do and figuring out how that feels and how that connects us to people. I mean, do you, do you find that? I mean, you've got, you've got some great kids, <laughs> you know, and I, and, and one of the things I like is how they watch. Um, they watch church happen all the time. When you guys are in church, they watch how people interact. Do you find that? Oh yeah. They're, you know, especially younger kids, I feel like we all are, but younger kids, especially they're very observant because they are they're They are taking in, right and seeing how should I act and let me look at let me look at the adults around me let me look at the you know the older kids around me and see how I should act you know in different situations um, you know I have a story about one of one of my children right we were watching um, you know because he does take in everything right we were watching television right um, we weren't actually watching it was just kind of on in the background the news was on um, as you were you know getting things ready and as you I've probably seen, right, there were a couple of talking heads who were arguing back and forth with each other, as, as is often the case. And he just paused there for a moment and just watched them, uh, you know, arguing with each other. And then, you know, asked, mommy, is, is that the way we're supposed to act, right? Is that the way grown-ups are supposed to act? And it really made me pause and think, look at him right now. He, right, he is taking this in. He is trying to decide what example do I need to follow? And he was smart enough to question, is this, is this a way I'm supposed to act? Um, and so then it, then it was up to me, right, to tell him, right, no, this, isn't, this is not an example of how we act, right? We can choose how we act, right? We can choose not to act, you know, angrily, but listen to each other. Right, and to think about, you know, how would God want us to act, right? And God wants us to be kind to each other. And so that was definitely something that, you know, really stuck in my mind. And I kept thinking about afterwards how, how perceptive he was about seeing the way people were acting around him. I like that. And, and again, it teaches us that even at no matter what age we're at, we're act at whatever age we're at, we're still trying to figure out. And we're always looking around us for good teachers right. and, and, and to figure out, you know, not only what we're supposed to do, but who are we supposed to do it for or with, you know, that's, that's a very profound thing. I think, I think your son is very wise in asking that question. I think it must've been kind of tough to try to answer it though. Oh yeah. It definitely took me by surprise. I was definitely surprised when he said that. Um, because you, you, you forget that they are, they are taking all this in, but, but, you know, we, we, we do too, right. We just do it much more, um, uh, you know, in our heads unconsciously while he was doing it out loud and asking about it. So, but I, the, the other thing I really like that you said, Father Marshall, is just the word intention too, right. To have intention before our actions as well, to, to take that moment to pause and reflect and to think, right and then to act and i think that's that's you know important as well to if we have that moment to think and reflect um you know we can act uh and as as jesus would ask us to you know it's funny that you bring up jesus because i've got a piece of scripture that i think can kind of help us with that would you like to hear it 
I would love to hear it. And what's great about it is that it's actually scripture from what's coming up this Sunday for Christ the King Sunday. Perfect. Um, we're going to hear it in church. So here you go. This is a part of it. Jesus says, when the son of man, who is him, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit at the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he'll separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or in prison and, gave, and visited you? Or, in, or when you were sick. And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And I think, you know, when we hear those gospel words, it, it's exactly what you were just saying in the lesson you were trying to teach your son. And also in the kind of funny story I told about how I learned how to celebrate the Eucharist is that, you know, we have to, realize that every person in front of us who is in need is someone for whom we can walk the talk, you know? And, and so if someone's hungry and we feed them, then we're doing what we need to do. If someone's thirsty and we give them something to drink, we know what we're, we know we're doing the right thing. If they're lonely and we visit with them or they're sick and we give them comfort, or even if they're in prison and we visit them, we're extending a mercy. Um, and we're showing what, that Micah passage, what does God ask of us, but to, to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. But we do that with each other, don't we? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you. Our, yeah, our relationships with each other, right? Where we can show this, yeah. Exactly. And thank what you. I appreciate is that your kids teach me as much about <laughs> what it means to walk with Jesus than anybody you guys you and neil's both too it's like i learn i learn more from my my flock i some i think sometimes than i'm able to teach them <laughs> so well that Thank was, that was actually a, yes that was a so good right now one. are we are we doing next week or is is next week a well next week's going to be a little early if you're up for it we'll actually probably be recording on monday and then we'll broadcast it on wednesday and we're gonna we're gonna wonder what we can really be thankful for. I don't know about you, but I'm finding gratitude, thankfulness is a little hard to find lately. It is, it is. So we'll have to do some thinking for this yeah, one. Absolutely. And I also want to remind everybody about our project for justice. Do you remember what it is? Yes. Right. To come up with our own icon of justice. Right. Our own representation of justice by the new year. Yep. And, and I have no idea what mine's going to look like yet. I'm nervous to try to figure it out, but I'm, I'm going to try. I'll get my paints out and give it a shot. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, Christina, you want to tie us off? And Sure. Yeah. Thanks. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And so we look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about uh, being thankful and um, have a great weekend. We'll see Bye. you on Sunday. Bye-bye.